Hey, welcome back, everybody. Time once again for another episode of WVU Marketing Communications Today from West Virginia University. Syndicated show that sits at squarely at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and modern marketing practice. So welcome as we bring our host, Cindy Greenglass. Hey, Cindy. Hey, how have you been? I'm doing good today. I don't know why, but I'm in a good mood today here. Maybe it's because I knew I was going to see you today. I'm always in a good mood when I get to do this show, that's for sure. And I'm going to make your day because you see? we have I knew that. a returning guest that you enjoyed so much when he joined us last that we have him back by popular demand. Not not often we have returning guests, so many things to talk about. We just usually move on to the next. But yes, this was one that I thought deserved a second bite at the apple here. We are fortunate to have back Dr. Larry Stoltz, and he is on the faculty of West Virginia University, he teaches creative strategy and execution, and has operated design and advertising firms in New Orleans and Atlanta. He's taught creative campaigns at Atlanta's Portfolio Center. Prior to teaching, he operated firms in hospitality, tourism, real estate, corporate communications, and healthcare. He served on the board of directors at the Atlanta Ad Club, and he provides ideation, facilitation, and consulting to clients throughout the Southeast. He's such a Renaissance man, and I have had the pleasure of sitting with him and his charming wife, Tricia, at Integrate when we've been live and at Morgantown and sat over a glass of wine or two. And Larry, I just so enjoy your company and every conversation is always so interesting. So I am thrilled to welcome you back, our 2010 Teaching Award recipient as well. Hello, Larry. Hello, Cindy. I'm glad to be with you too. I always enjoy talking with you and now, seeing you. The founder you at go. Idea Tailwind. And I'm told that today's topic, you're gonna to make the bold claim the, the claim that seems to run counter to everything I'm going through in my life today here, that nothing, absolutely nothing, just hits you out of the blue. <laughs> well, yes, uh, lately, that is true. I have had students tell me that they just get ideas out of the blue, and I've said about proving them that there are ways that we have to come up with our ideas. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that today. It's interesting that yesterday there was a broadcast from the IMC Integrate Group, Online Integrate, and they were talking about developing portfolios for people uh, that are going into the business. And they mentioned content marketing being based on research and data management. And I agree with that. But what more? Where do your ideas come from? Where do big ideas come from? And I thought, first of all, since we did this about 18 months ago, we talked about brainstorming and mind mapping and assumption smashing and force analogy metaphors, out of the blue thinking. And so we did talk a little bit about random stimulus response, but I want to take a deeper dive into that this afternoon for the first half of the show, and then I want to talk about my favorite thinking technique is life's universal journey. Well, I think we'll do that maybe right after the break. That's okay, Cindy. It's great. I've got my pen and notepad ready to take massive notes, and last time we did this, I bought two of the books that you recommended, and so please don't hesitate to make any reference recommendations for us, too. Oh, I've got, yeah, I've got two, maybe the same two you bought, but I've got a couple that I do want to talk about. But when I'm asked how big ideas come to creative people or people in the marketing business, I tell them it's our life experiences that give us understanding and perception. The things we go through in life are dictate or tell us how we interpret and give meaning to things that then we want to create and give back to our customers, our clients. They give us ways of communicating, but they're very emotional. There are some of these I'll talk about that people have a lot of emotion about. When we, IMC professionals and creative people, work these experiences into our conceptual strategies and executions, our audiences will be able to relate to our message. They'll not only thank us for knowing them, but they'll be proud that they got it. Like, oh, I understand what that creative message is because I've had that kind of experience. Thank you for thinking I'm smart enough to understand. So that's a really important way that we're talking to our our public, our clients. Random stimulus response 
I will refer to two books by Michael Metalko. He wrote one called Thinker Toys and another called Cracking Creativity. And in there, he recommends that uh, a method of thinking that is called random stimulus response. You can randomly select any number of anything and use those to draw connections. He spends a lot of time talking about random words, random objects, random images, random aromas. I throw, I throw in aromas, textures, sounds, colors, and shapes, too, because those are triggers. You, you use those to think. If you take a randomly selected group of words, for instance, you list the characters of each of those words. And I've got his list. His list might include a list of five words. might be acid, stamp, beetle, sun, and summer. And what he gets into is how you can find the characteristics of those words and draw associations between those, anything about those words, and then force connections. The more connections you make, the more likely you are to find a big idea or not. Maybe you won't. Then you move on to another set of words. I'm sure that you would like to hear some examples of what I'm talking about. He talked about nose. What if one of your words is nose? This one's kind of funny because if you talk about a nose, what is what are the things about noses? There's different shapes and sizes. They're sometimes decorated with pins and jewels. They can be repaired easily if broken. There's hair inside, and it has two nostrils. And one of the things that he talks about is kind of funny because this came this book came out prior to the Prius, the car, the Prius. He said connecting a nose has two nostrils with improving the car, if that's the problem we're trying to solve, triggers the idea of building a car with two separate power sources, a car with a battery or electric power for city driving and liquid fuel for long distances. So I put a big smiley face beside that because this was written prior to the development and release of the Prius. So I thought that was pretty perceptive of him, right? Let's see. There's another one that he wrote about, about honey. Going to try to find honey page 150. There was a group that wanted to do random stimulus with objects, and they were trying to solve a problem of ice on power lines. It was a utility company. They were trying to figure out how to make sure the ice didn't build up during ice storms on their power lines. They couldn't figure it out. So everybody went out and got an object to bring back and put on the table to think about. What kind of ideas is, is that going to give you? And one man went out to the convenience store and brought back a, a, a bottle of honey. And they thought, what about this bottle of honey? He says, well, I think we should do honey. We could put it up on top of the power pole and get a bear to climb the power pole to get the honey, and the vibration from that would shake the ice off of the power lines. That's a little they, dangerous that's... idea. A, I know. The bear. I'm thinking they... more about the bear than the, the power line. Yeah. <laughs> well, indeed, they decided that it would attract bears and they'd climb up there, but that was really not a very feasible idea. But then they talked about what the reason for that was to get the bear to vibrate the lines and knock the honey off, right? So then they came around eventually and they brought in helicopters to hover over those lines and the vibrations from the helicopter's rotors did indeed knock the honey down. So that was an example of random thinking about objects. How did that work? There's another example he talks about involving the Hubble telescope. At one time, the Hubble it quit working very well. The, it became misdirected. The, the mirrors weren't set right. And evidently, it had some ability to adjust. They could in, adjust some things from the ground. One of the scientists was taking a shower in his hotel room with one of those uh, shower uh, attachments on a hose. And he looked at it and looked at it and thought, well, what if we had something inside the Hubble that had little bitty mirrors and little bitty motors that could adjust the main mirror on the little hoses? And they did that, and it saved the day for the Hubble telescope several years ago. Would these random stimulus exercises be done collectively, collaboratively, in a team environment? Or can you do this on your own? You can do it on your own. It's harder because it's more fun and more productive to do it in small groups, six people, seven people. Four. I've done it with groups of three or four students. But doing it by yourself just simply requires discipline. You have to write everything down for yourself and make sure you don't forget anything. And, and it's sort of a little bit cumbersome to do it by yourself, but it is very, very effective. There's one that I wanted to do about aroma. This one I think was pretty cool. One of the random words for a group was nose, but then another one was smell. And then they were trying to solve a problem of how do you improve an automobile with a revolutionary new idea. And so they eventually came up with the idea of incorporating a cartridge 
in a new car that emitted smells, or esters, I think they call it, that would tell you what's going on with your car. And his examples were, if you smell cinnamon, you might have a gasoline leak. And if you smell <laughs> orange blossoms, it might be time to fix your brakes. And so, you know, those kind of ideas just come around. They're kind of fun. That is. It's cool. very interesting. Give us the name again of the, the random stimulus. It's Thinker Toys. Who's the author? Thinker Toys is the name of the book, Thinker Toys, mm -hmm. by Michael Michalko, M-I-C-H-A-L-K-O. And then he wrote a second book, a follow-up book, called Cracking Creativity, The Secrets of Creative Genius. And it's, they're both about an inch and a half thick, and they're just full of te techniques and procedures, processes that you can use to come up with ideas. Just full. Um, just before we'll go on the break and let's, you know, we bring this together and say this exercise of doing random stimulus and pulling together maybe five random characteristics, then what's the quick process that you can go through? I'm, I'm asking you to tell a little bit of the secret sauce, but is there a formal process that goes from random to connection to big idea? A secret sauce, I'm not positive whether I could define that, but he does talk about listing the characteristics of every word or every object, all the characteristics you can, and then you force connections. You, what is the essence of those those words? What's the essence of the connections? And then you force connections. And uh, Arlo Guthrie had a song called Alice's Restaurant. He talked about circles and arrows. You draw circles and arrows on the back of each picture, defining what's going on in that picture. And that's eventually, that's how I do like brainstorming. If we brainstorm on a whiteboard, I'll have the students put lots of words and lots of thoughts up on the whiteboard, and then go back with a red marker and do circles and arrows to See what the connections are between all the things they came up with in a brainstorming session. I'm sure a lot of people have done that, but that's the process. That's the sauce, I think. Circles and arrows. Paul, you probably can relate to Arlo Guthrie a little bit. I have a <laughs> feeling. <laughs> I smiled when he said that I loved Alice's Restaurant, that whole long, twisted tale of uh, how everything just gets out of control. Yeah, that's funny. I, the, the night I had a blind date with my, my wife, my first date with my wife, I performed our Alice's Restaurant at our local coffee house. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. It's, it's a long <laughs> piece. It goes on. I mean, it can go on forever. It, can, it goes on like yeah. five, ten minutes or something at least. Ten minutes, it yeah. Is it's very long. <laughs> well, before we break for our WVU sponsor and give it back to Paul for a minute or two, I want to just uh, tee up for you, Larry, what we'd like you to discuss in the second part of our podcast, and that's this concept you mentioned of life's universal journey. What is it? How you find that to be compelling as part of our ability to develop creative briefs, big ideas, strategy statements, and um, tie it all together. So I'll look forward to a little journey with you after the break. All right, we'll do that. And while we're uh, quickly going to Google to look up Alice's Restaurant, I want you to uh, remind you that WVU's Integrate Conference has moved online. Only makes sense. Most conferences are doing that today. So marketing communication experts from a variety of industries will be online exploring how and what to say during this unprecedented pandemic and all the other ensuing problems that are consuming us today here. The things that do seem to have hit us out of the blue. View the schedule and tune into the live virtual sessions at integrate.wvu.edu. Go check it out today. Integrate.wvu.edu. And after you do that, we just want to remind you that West Virginia University's new digital marketing communications master's degree program, it's fully online as well and can be completed in one year. With built-in certifications from platforms like Google and Facebook, the program gives you both the strategy and skills you need to reach audiences today on both existing and emerging media like this. Learn more at marketing communications, one word, marketingcommunications.wvu.com. E D U. And now back to the one show that, uh, like Alice's Restaurant, you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant at WVU today. Here, we're going to give you a full menu of stuff and uh, some action items here, right? Yes, we are back. Even though you were talking about things that 
just hit you out of the blue, and certainly creativity and concept shouldn't. Dr. Stultz recommended a book, what is it, Smack Up the Side of the Head? Uh, I, think I love the I, sound of that. All right. <laughs> give, I him feel a, like that give him a smack days. upside the head here, yeah. <laughs> All right, Larry, we'll send it back to you. Tell me about life's universal journey. This sounds like, you know, the art of motorcycle maintenance. Oh, yeah, the Zen book. Yeah, the, well, um, it kind of is. For many years, I've worked with students on recognizing their life, that we all have millions, probably, probably billions of experiences that we share. And it's a universal journey going through life. There's things that we've all experienced, and it's fun to talk about. I used to do videos with this, but I can tell you five things that you've known in your life. You and Paul both, we've enjoyed cookies and milk together, probably Oreos or Chips Ahoy, unless you're lactose intolerant. You hit me, you hit uh, my big two right there. Yeah, and you've looked at a baby's fingers and toes and said, those are tiny. We've all stood in a mud puddle barefoot and felt the ooze coming up between our toes. Here's one people sort of recoil at, but I think everybody accidentally has had a dog or a cat lick them right in the face. <laughs> and we, we know that dog's tongues are slippery and soft and a cat's tongue is scratchy. We know that, right? And here's one that I've seen in at least two commercials and in the last scene in a movie. I can't remember the movie, but we've all flown our hand out the window of our car as we go down the highway. Everybody's done that. So what else is there? There's millions of experiences. I wrote down a few this morning. The smell of an extinguished match. We all know mm. what that is. Personally, I put down the smell of my grandmother's bathroom. She used a particular kind of soap, and I've, to this day, I've really recoiled at that soap because it reminds me of my old grandmother. That was when I was a child. Lately, here's one that we all have been doing this week, probably, if you're able to get outside. First dip in an outdoor pool before the summer sun could warm the water. We all know how that feels. The silhouette of a jetliner flying in front of a full moon. I've seen that in print ads before and on, and, and on uh, video. So all of those things, uh, there's indelible memories that we had, things that happened and you knew immediately that you said it or felt it or heard it or saw it that you would never forget. It's little snippets that they come back. There's a trigger somewhere in your day or your night or your life or sometime that triggers those little memories that come back. There's unforgettable feelings, uh, reactions, uh, fears and elations that come to you and you're never going to forget them ever. So that is life's universal journey. And the reason I bring it up is that that's fodder, that's fertilizer, that is stuff you can go back and draw out of your history, your life's universal journey. And if you do put some of those experiences or an experience into your social media or your Instagram page or a TV spot or a radio spot for that matter, print ad if you ever do one, then your market is going to developing an affinity because somebody's going to say, wait, 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 I have flown my hand out the car window before, just like that kid did. I know how that feels. That's cool. I'm glad they know me. You want your market to feel like you know them. So all of those things are just perfect in a big bag that you can pull out and put into your work and people will know. Right now I'm teaching a class. We're doing creative briefs and strategy statements this week, and I have them write what I call a, a day in the life story of the target market of one. So they have to do a creative, inventive story of a hypothetical, fictional target market of one for their product or their campaign. And it's surprising to me how many times little snippets from Life's Universal Journey end up in those stories. The people that get up at 7.13 every morning and do coffee before they even get the kid out of bed, those little things that we all know about our lives are good to put into the, to your work. So when we're trying to reach people where they live and where they spend their time, whether they're social media or what, we have to reach them viscerally with messages they can relate to and react to. So drawing on our own experiences is what can point us in the right direction. This is very interesting, Larry. So there is underlining this a concept that, that the experience has the same universal reaction. I'm just saying, is there a risk that the smell of my um, grandmother's bathroom 
is nostalgically pleasing to me because it reminds me of ivory soap in a simpler time and, and I could use it as borrowed interest to have something that was about simplicity and sweet and simple. And you are think, ooh, that's something that doesn't resonate well with me at all. It's, you know, it's old and awful. Um, do we have to be careful about uh, what reaction or trigger a specific episode or object could create? Yes, I think that's perceptive of you. That's really true because I won't mention the name of the soap that I don't like because it was my grandmother's soap. <laughs> but a lot of people, they were talking in that presentation yesterday about when they test social media, test their uh, Instagram or their whatever they're putting out on social media, they'll do A and B roles. They'll often do an A and a B and then test those back and forth and then change it to A, B, and C or B and C until they see what kind of response they're getting out of the market, how many clicks they're getting or how many likes they're getting or whatever. So, yeah, you have to not only be careful in the first place, but you also have to judge it as you go, make sure you're doing exactly the right thing. I had some fun earlier before we got on the air today about doing hashtag searches on uh, Instagram or subject matter, subject searches on, on YouTube just to see. And I did. I found a ton of pictures and little videos of kids in, standing in a mud puddle or a dog licking a face. I found I could have sat here all the rest of the day watching people, videos of dogs licking them in the face. So all of those things are that just shows me that they're universal. People really get yeah. into those kinds of images. Well, with the amount of time that we have left together, because I know I could talk to you all afternoon. Uh, Dr. Stelch, you're always so fascinating and bring up so many interesting topics for us. A day in the life and life's universal journey, how our life's experience can inform our creative thinking and random stimulus response. As we tie things up here, what would you like to leave us with as a parting thought and uh, you'd like us to think about as we carry on for the balance of our day? Well, just go back to the title. You know, nothing hits you out of the blue. You are the sum total of your experiences and your emotions and, and the things you have thought, things you have done. And, and when you're feeling stuck, like you cannot come up with a concept, Yes, you can. You just have to go back and use some of these techniques, and you will definitely find creative and useful marketing concepts. You don't have to. You don't have to be alone out there. I love that. And today, sometimes we really do feel isolated and alone, don't we? We're all been cooped up in our homes and not able to be with our our peers like we are used to around the water cooler, the coffee pot, or wherever we like to be. And so it's nice to know we're never alone. Let's reach out for some Oreos and a glass of milk and think about <laughs> the better times that lie ahead. Good job, Cindy. Had fun talking to you. You too. Send my best to Tricia. I will. I will. Have a good one. You've been listening to WBU Marketing Communications Today. Brought to you live from West Virginia University. A weekly program that explores unique Marcom strategies that will help you inform, persuade, and inspire your audiences. Right here on the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you.